So tonight, we're going to set up our laptops. I just want to introduce you to a course resource first. And if you go to YouTube, Todd McLeod. I should probably do this incognito. So it doesn't like think I'm me. Even though they know I'm me, they'll show it to me. Ha ha! -ha. Somebody else is there. So if you go to my playlists and you go to uh, Golang Web Programming Fall 2016, that's our class. Okay. So here are the videos from last week. The longest video is the last one there where I just got super excited. I was a little delirious maybe late. But tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our machines, first of all. And then once our machines are set up, uh, we'll get the code base from GitHub on your computers. And then we'll start running that code locally so you'll have all the samples and you'll be able to run everything. Sound good? So to uh, get Go set up, uh, we have to do some stuff at the terminal. It's also known as the command line interface. On a Mac, you could bring up Spotlight Search, Command, Spacebar. You could also get there by just going to this little search icon on your Mac, and that brings up Spotlight up here in the top right corner. And when you do that, you could type in Terminal, and that will bring up the Terminal on the Mac. I was doing some stuff. There we go. And... Uh, so just the first thing is terminology. How many people in here have worked at the command line interface? How many people have never worked on the command line interface? Cool, and kind of in between a little? Yeah. A little bit of in between? So it's called the command line interface, and that's to distinguish it from the graphical user interface. The graphical user interface is sometimes referred to as GUI, G-U-I. Command line interface can be referred to as CLI, command line interface. And on a Mac, it could be called Terminal, or Bash, or Shell, right? And on Windows, it's like the Command Prompt, or I don't know, what do they call it on Windows? See, I'm not even totally clear. Command Prompt, Command, Command, Command Prompt. See, I don't know. Anyhow, that's my understanding of it. I'm not 100% clear, but... Just trying to clarify a little bit. So the next thing for us to know is we're going to have to set some environment variables. And so if you uh, at on the Mac, and if you don't aren't running on the Mac, I'm going to show you how you get uh, a shell a terminal which lets you use Unix types command commands, Unix type commands on Windows because I just find it's easier to do things with Unix type commands. Okay, so we're just going to do that. Go is written by dudes who help build Unix and they help build C and they help build UTF-8 and so it uses, you know, it's I guess it's just for me at least helpful to use Unix stuff. I don't know some of this stuff on Windows so I just don't. I didn't study computer science, I studied economics and business and I ended up in this field so Unix is also sometimes referred to as POSIX operating systems, and uh, Linux is included in that category, right? So yeah, we're going to do stuff using the terminal and Unix POSIX types command commands. And so you have environment variables, and if you type in, I'm just giving you the high-level overview right now. If you type in E and V, you start to see different environment variables. One of your environment variables is the path environment variable. So there's the path environment variable. How many people understand environment variables? How many people are kind of like, eh, iffy on environment variables? All right, cool. So environment variables are just variables for your environment. Kind of self-explanatory phrase. But if we look at this path environment variable here, we can see that it's pointing to different things, like there's different paths here. So here's user local go app engine, colon. And then there's users tm002 Google Cloud SDK bin. So there's different entries here. 
And the way I like to think of the path environment variable, so environment variables and the path variables, one of the environment variables, the way I like to think of the path environment variable is like, and also all environment variables in some ways, is when I ask my computer to do something, my computer will go look down these pathways to see if any of these pathways have the code to know how to do it. So one of my pathways is user local go bin. And bin stands for binary, as in it's a binary executable. And so that's like, I have a folder, here's the root of my computer, that's slash, and then I have a folder user, and then I have a folder local, and then I have a folder go, as in the go programming language, and then I have a folder bin, like this is the go programming language binary executable. And so when I ask my computer to run, <coughs> when I ask my computer to run a go program, it's going to look down these different pathways, right? And it will look here first. It'll be like, hello, 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 is anybody there? And the door will open. Yes, this is the Go App Engine household. Oh, cool, you're the Go App Engine household. Do you know how to run a Go program? No, we only do Go App Engine programs here. Sorry, good luck. Well, thank you very much. I'll go to the next door. And it goes to the next door. Hello, I'm trying to run a Go program. Do you know how to run a Go program? You know, uh, we're Google Cloud SDK here. We don't do the Go program executables. But keep going down those different pathways and see if you find the one that does it. And then finally it comes to this one. If I can find my mouse. And it's like, hello, do you know how to run a Go program? Why, yes, I do. Right? And so you're telling your computer kind of like, go look in these places when I ask you to do certain stuff. And we'll see that demonstrated. Do you want to see it demonstrated instantly? No. Or you want to kind of just keep building? Demonstrated instantly. Oh dear lord. So here's main.go. Okay? And random int. We'll take that out. I kind of like that code. I guess we have it in a video if I ever need to come back to it. Random. You know, I'm going to just do 01 rand. I'll put that in there. And, and we'll copy that. We'll do O2. Hello. Should be opposite, but whatever. X colon equal hello class. I no longer need those. Okay, so now, where am I at? Print working directory. Users tm002 change documents, go workspace, source, github, goes to 11, golang web dev, 000, and 02. Yeah. And what's your little shortcut for the autocomplete? Tab. I just start typing the first word and hit tab, and it completes the rest of it when it's no other options, no other conflicting options. And so I could run this right here. Go run main.go. Hello class. Cool. Right? I can also do go build. What happened? I did go build and it built it and it put some binary right there. That's binary. That's an executable program. So I can now do and I'm saying on the Mac, that's Mac at the command shell dot forward slashes run that and it ran that binary. That's go build. Go build, and there's like all kinds of nuances to the Go language, and so if you go look in the language spec or whatever, there's like, I don't know what you call them, reserved words, keywords, something like that, golang.org, and documents, and uh, frequently asked questions, the Go wiki, package documentation, maybe under package command documentation, that's what I want, and then here's the Go command, and then here are like the different commands. Go build, right? Go install. So go build compiles packages and dependencies. Go install will compile and install packages and dependencies. And so I have a folder here. Dot 
documents, go workspace, source. So here's my go workspace. And you guys are all going to have a go workspace. And your go workspace has to be defined in this way. Right? So you need some folder where you're going to like keep all of your go, go work. And in that folder, you're going to have a three folders, source, package, and bin. Okay? So your source will be where all your source code is. And there's a certain way that you organize your folders, which has to do with uh, uh, namespacing. That's the phrase I was looking for. So namespacing is the way, the way we can agree upon a way of naming and organizing code so that we don't get conflicts with other people's code. So namespacing here is where is my repository where this is kept, and then what is my username on GitHub, and then inside there I have my code. So I have other people's code which I've downloaded here because you could download people's third-party packages and it automatically gets organized into my namespace. For instance, I have Julian Schmidt's router right here. I'm going to delete that. I just deleted Julian Schmidt's router. If I go to godoc.org and I search for Schmidt. Here's a uh, well. God help me if I can't find Julian Schmidt's router again. Inspired by Julian Schmidt's router. So let me just do this, and I will search here. Command F. Command Shift F. There we go. Schmidt. project and there's that so this should be the path where it's at so I should be able to get that right there and see what happens when I put that in here I have two slashes there it is no that's two still it's not found I'm at godoc.org let me see if I could go get it go get because that's what I wanted to show you yeah, but the documentation needs to be there, so I don't know why it's not there. So I'm going to go get that code from GitHub. If it's still there, we shall see. And when I do that, we'll see Julian Schmidt reappear here. So I went and got it, and now that code's back. So go get is another command that we can use, like npm. There's git. Like npm, no package manager, but eh, that kind of npm is wonky and it has some serious flaws. Go is perfect, no, no flaws, in case you haven't figured that out yet. So I do go git and it brings that down and you can see the namespacing convention here. I have my source folder, GitHub, and then the username and then the code. Nice. Right, and so here's mine, and that's where I'll put all my code. And so we were looking at Golang Web Dev, which is one of my repos. Cool, and then I also just connect it with Git, connect that folder with Git, and so now anybody could download this, and it goes into their workspace, and it's all organized. So you have to have in your workspace, you have to have three folders: your source folder, where all your source code is stored. Then there's packages, right? So when you build something. I don't know. You get these .a files. And so .a file is like an archive file. It's already converted to binary. It leads to faster builds. So it could just suck that binary in. Right? So it doesn't have to recompile that little third-party package. It's just compiled that once. The first time it's compiled. And it's stored in package. That leads to faster compile times when you're working. And then I have a bin folder here, which is for my binary. So I have two programs there, right? I am going to do a go and go. I'm, now remember, I am here in O2 hello, which was this one right here. I'm going to delete that binary, just get rid of it. I did the go build to get that. Now I'm going to do go install. And when I do go install, right, it installed it right here, 02 hello. And the name it took on is the name of the folder. So that became my binary, my executable. Well, guess what? I have a go env, my environment variables here. No, better than that. 
in my environment variables dollar echo dollar path right I have somewhere in my go workspace right here users tm002 documents go workspace bin so I could just type in 02 hello and it's gonna look down all of my pathways until it finds that command and it looked down each of these pathways and then finally it's like boom there it is run it so that's a just an example of how environment variables the pathway environment the path environment variable is when you tell it to run something all I did was say o2 hello so it started looking down all those pathways to see if there's some program called o2 hello 02 hello cool anybody confused about that so uh, I'm just gonna stop this video and we'll start another one so the videos don't get too long and that way when you're looking through them and you know wanting to rewatch something uh, they're easy to find and I'll call this one like uh, Golang package management workspace environment variables sound good